Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial where I'm going to walk you through how to paint two penguins using watercolors. For a list of everything you need to get started, be sure to check out the video description below. So I started by filling out where I wanted the penguins to be. So I usually use like ovals or circles to sort of mark out where I want them to be on the page. Um, this helps me get the proportions right right off the bat so that I'm not starting out with um, say just the head and then I find that when I get to the body it's too far to the right or it's too large for the page. So I just recommend starting out that way. Um, at any point you can simply pause the video and use the reference photo to sketch it out. Um, I did speed up this portion only because drawing it out can be a little bit tedious and time consuming. Um, and I really just wanted to skip to the watercolors as soon as possible. So I did make a few little edits. I made her a little bit slimmer and I also had her looking forward versus looking up. So once I'm done sketching it out, I erase all the parts that I don't want or the parts that need to be a little bit lighter because you don't want to have too dark underneath your watercolors. That way they'll all show through and it's a lot harder to erase pencil after the fact. So whenever I started a painting, I start by adding clear water first because I'm trying to create a background. So in this case, I'm taking um, a large round brush that holds quite a bit of water and I'm laying down a clear coat first and then I'm dropping in some teal paint and you can use a variety of colors for this. You'll see I'm dropping in some green here. I'm just kind of intuitively laying down colors that I know will blend together well should they happen to join. So I'm going in all the sp spots that are lighter on the penguin first. With watercolors, I always work lighter to darker. So I'm going in on all the white spots on the penguin and I'm allowing it to bleed outside of the lines too. So you'll notice that I'm not super careful with my water. If it bleeds into the black parts, that doesn't matter. It's gonna be covered. And I definitely want it to go outside the lines as far as the background. So I like to use the tip of my brush as I'm going along to create a little bit of fur texture, but not too much. This layer is all about getting color down, so it's not so important that you have a ton of detail at this point. So just make your way around, adding clear water first, then adding different colors that you want to appear. At this stage, if you're adding splatters, they will bleed quite a bit um, into the water that you've laid down, and that's a good thing. You're wanting that variety and that texture underneath. If you save all of the splatters for right at the end, you're not gonna get that variation in that texture that you will if you're constantly adding more as you go. And if you find you've added too much, you simply add a bit of clear water over top and they disappear and blend in. So you may notice that I have a habit of always adding um, certain colors together. So I add cool colors together and warm colors together. And that's just because if you add say blue and yellow together, they may create say a brown or a muddy color. So I'm just kind of mindful of that. Whenever you have clear water going down first, you're going to have colors blending together. So you just have to be mindful of which ones you're putting together. So right now I'm going in and just continuously adding more and more detail while still trying to keep things very loose. With the background, you really wanna have a minimal amount of detail. So clear water will be your friend here. The more you have, the less control you have. I find there's two types of people when they're starting with watercolors. There's people who add a ton of water to begin with, almost too much that the page buckles quite a bit and that they have zero control over where the paint is going. And then there's the people who have too much control and they always have a dry page and they're always using their brush to do all the work. And you wanna kind of land somewhere in between. So you wanna have a sheen of clear water in the area you're working, but not so much that the waters, that the paint is sort of pooling. So when you look at it at an angle, you shouldn't be able to see bubbles of water on the page. Other than, of course, when you do splatters. So as I said before, I'm now adding more splatters. So that way these ones, some of them will blend in and some of them won't. And I like to use a hairdryer to quickly dry certain parts so that I can keep working. 
feel free to pause it and let your painting dry. So now I'm going in and starting to add some of those details because I've let all the lighter parts dry. I can go in and add the beak right up next to that pink line that I had. So I'm using a dagger brush here. And like I said, I linked all of the products I use in the video description below. Um, the dagger brush is one I really enjoy using because it gives me a lot of control. I can use the side of the brush to add more color or I can use just the tip of the brush to add um, feathery lines or details. And it does take a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, but it's one brush that I've used in almost every painting I've done. So like the background and the body that I did, I'm also using clear water first when I go in and do the head. And I'm gonna want it to be made up of several layers. So don't worry if you don't get it extremely dark yet. We're just wanting to add some blues and purples now to try and start the darkening process. I wasn't too sure where the eye was on the reference photo, so I just made up a spot, and I'm not gonna give a lot of attention to it even when the painting is finished. So if you just fill it all in and end up using a little white dot later with some acrylic white paint to indicate where it is, that's fine too. So I'm letting the head dry now and I'm going back into the body and I'm going to just add another layer over the top. With watercolors, it's so important to work in layers because they're just much more interesting when you have multiple layers showing through. So whenever you're doing a second coat, make sure you're not completely filling up over top of the first coat. It's just a little bit more interesting. So now I'm going to go in to the body and start adding a bit of color there. So once again, I'm using that dark Prussian blue and the, I can never say, the, it's a dark purple. I can never say the word. It's like di di I, I can't even try. So we're going in and doing clear water first and adding in those colors again. And they're gonna blend together and make their way around the penguin. And if they aren't making their way around, it's probably because you don't have enough clear water. So if that's the case, you just come in with a little bit more clear water after the fact and it will start blending together. So I'm using a lot of those blues and teals just because they do make a really good undercoat for the penguin. If you wanna go in with black over top and those colors shine through, it looks really good. That's just something I've found over time that those cooler colors just make up a really nice black. So I'm outlining all the areas where I want the dark spots to end. And then I'm just allowing the water to take it in so the more water you have, the more it'll bleed, but the more it'll dilute the color as well. So you won't get those richer blacks, but that's okay because we can work in layers. So now I'm using the tip of the dagger brush to add those feathery brush strokes. And you can see how wonderfully this brush works right here with that tail. It's so easy to lay down that texture just using the tip of the brush. I feel like I see so many artists using round brushes and I just can't believe more people don't use this dagger brush. It's just my absolute favorite. I'd love to hear in the comments what brushes are your favorite to work with because I certainly don't know all of them and there's some that I've seen artists working with that I've never worked with just because I've gotten so comfortable with my set. So I'm going around and doing the wing now and I'm leaving a few little white spots. You can see them in the reference photo, but they just help differentiate where the wing begins and ends. So I may even exaggerate a couple of them. But just keep adding color, keep layering that up to get it darker and darker. Whenever I throw in a color like bright pink, I'll make sure to add it in a couple of places so that it's not only appearing once. And here I'm not even adding clear water first. It's such a tiny area. I don't think having that variation is as important. So I'm just going in with the tip of the brush and adding the color of the head. And I want it to be quite dark. So 
So I'm just going in and adding more and more detail now. We're getting to about the midway point on the painting, a little more than midway, where we're starting to add detail, but also still building in some of that um, initial layer. So what I mean by the detail is we're adding some little brush strokes that represent the feathers, but we're also adding in some larger swaths of color to build up a nice underpainting. So I'm adding in the beak, the eyes, just using the tip of the brush. I do find I have a lot of control with that, but if you prefer, you can always use a liner brush for this area. It works in a very similar way. I almost prefer the digger brush from the perspective of that I don't have quite as much control as a liner brush, so it almost adds little happy mistakes that happen. So um, when I have a little less control, sometimes the brush strokes just look a little bit more random. And I think I like that with this style. So I'm just very lightly adding some insinuation of feathers. So I'm not necessarily adding each individual feather. You can't see them in the photo. Um, you don't notice them in real life, but if you just add a few, the eye just assumes the rest are there. So now I'm going in and adding more splatters. There are some areas that are still wet where they'll bleed in and there's areas that aren't. And then I take some clear water um, and go over top of all these splatters so that they become random sizes. So I find when you're just adding the splatters themselves, you don't get as much randomness, but you'll see if you go over top now with clear water, it just makes some of them bigger. So just make your way around, add as many as you want, and then you can use your brush to control. See, I'm using my brush to control the sides of them. So if I have a clean-ish brush, I say clean-ish because my water is getting quite dirty. But if you use your brush, you can simply go in and get rid of a few of them if there's too many. I'm using my um, larger brush just to add a few fun stripes of color. This is a large flat brush. This is the one where I'll do most of my splatters just because I like how much water it holds and the shape of the splatters that it gives me. I also just enjoy these sort of strips of color. They'll dry quite a bit lighter. You won't necessarily see them quite as strong. So I'm using my liner brush to add a few details like the feet, going underneath the little baby penguin and darkening it where you see those shadows. Using this small brush gives me a bit more control to add some of those details where I need that control. So for the eye, it's important just to leave a tiny bit of white, but not too much. We don't need a lot there. Um, as you can see by the reference photo, you can't even see the eye. So even if you have none, it'll still translate as a penguin. It's just nice to have a tiny bit of white showing just because I feel like Sometimes in a reference photo, they can get away with not having an eye because you know it's a penguin. That is what a penguin looks like. It is a photograph. Whereas in a painting, there's certain things that you sometimes have to adjust just because it'll make it look kind of wonky in a painting, especially a painting where you're already taking a lot of, um, I don't know what the word is, where you're making a lot of changes already. It's best not to go too crazy. So I'm going in and darkening the head a little bit. I do like some of those lighter parts, but not too many. I really wanna have that nice contrast between the body and the white parts of the penguin. And because I did add quite a bit of color in the body, you sometimes have to exaggerate that a little bit more. So I found that I needed a little bit of color behind that baby penguin just to balance it out. So I threw in a little bit of yellow. So now I'm just making some touch-ups here and there. All right, so that is everything. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up if you had a lot of fun painting.
Be sure to tag me on Instagram, whitehouse underscore art. I love to see your finished paintings. Thanks for watching.